Hey everybody, welcome to Plaid and welcome to our Let's Paint Live, where the first Thursday of every month, we spend about an hour teaching you a painting, teaching you tricks, um, some tips, and just some really fun basic techniques. So today, I am honored to paint this beautiful painting that our one and only Jessie painted, and she's not able to be here tonight, so I hope I can do, I hope I can do, um, justice to this beautiful painting, but in about an hour, we are going to learn some tips, <clears throat> excuse me, some techniques, and just complete this beautiful painting. What I love most about tonight is we are working on a round canvas. We normally, as everybody that joins us, we usually paint on a square or a rectangle, and this is just so fun and unique because all of your craft retailers have beautiful stretched canvases in unique shapes. And I thought this round was really unique and a fun way um, to do tonight's class. So first thing I wanna do is show you guys the supplies that we, are, that we are using for tonight. We always use our Let's Paint Live kit. So all of the colors, all of the brushes are out of that kit. So if you've already got that kit, you've got all of the supplies that you need. Before I introduce you guys to the supplies, I want to let you know that Dylan is in the studio with us. And if you guys have any questions or um, you want me to hold up the painting or kind of show you guys what I did for, you know, a close up or another time, let me know. Dylan will answer any questions that you guys have in the chat. Okay. So with that, again, I'm using the round stretched canvas. And then in the Let's Paint Live kit, I'm using the Folk Art Matte Acrylic. And I'm using some basic colors. I'm using pure orange, baby pink, always wicker white, then this beautiful apple red, and then I'm using the navy blue. Oh, this is my favorite blue, Dutch aqua, which is a really light, beautiful aqua color. And then I'm using classic green, and then I'm using the daffodil yellow, which is just a beautiful basic yellow. So then you're also using all of the brushes from the Let's Paint Live kit, but I'm going to focus on really a small, a medium, and a large flat brush. There's two, there's eight, there's 12, there's a three-quarter inch, but I always like to tell people have a large, a medium, and a smaller flat brush. So that's what we're going to focus on tonight. And then the only extra supplies that you guys are going to need is paper towels, water to clean your brushes, and then some type of paint palette. We are going to mix a color or two. I like to use palette paper, but if you have a paper plate or even a ceramic plate, whatever you like to use for your paint palette. And then for tonight, we always have um, a blow dryer in our supply list. The reason we have that is we want to get to the fun stuff, the techniques and the tips, and to do that we've got to have a dry base coat. So we just kind of accelerate the dry time with a blow dryer. And then to apply our pattern today, I've just got a standard piece of chalk, what you would use on a chalkboard in your kitchen or in your kids room. So that's how we're going to apply our pattern. Alright, so with that I'm going to get started. We got Sherry in the chat. Hey Sherry! Okay, guys, so the first thing, I'm going to try to leave that on the screen so you guys can reference that. But the first thing that I'm going to do is simply apply a dark base coat. And I am going to use the navy blue. I love working on a dark base coat because what it allows you to do is to shade and highlight in almost a reverse order and it just gives you so much depth and dimension. Where you see all these dark colors, that's actually your base coat. You're not having to go in and outline all of your design elements. So I'm just gonna squeeze some of that navy blue directly onto my canvas. And using my 3 quarter inch flat brush, I'm just gonna do a nice even base coat. Doesn't have to be perfect, because we're covering it up with all of our design elements but you want it pretty even and pretty consistent. I always say do to the edge exactly what you do to the top because then your painting looks that much more finished and that much more perfect when you're all done. So in tonight's class, I probably won't do the edge of this canvas 
but I want to show you guys it's stapled and or it doesn't have any staples and it's stretched so if you base coat the top blue I always say do the same thing to the sides so if you've got time and I'm not going I'm not going too fast definitely paint your edges if not it'll be an easy thing to do maybe tomorrow or maybe after the class is over and the top is dry a little bit more of that navy blue I love working with the acrylics because they dry so quickly I'm going to sneak a base coat onto my edges does not have to be perfect you want to make sure there's no areas where the paint is really thick just nice and even changing that white canvas into a dark a dark base coat for us to learn some new techniques tonight a little bit more of the navy And the dark base coat can really be anything. You could use black, you could use a really, really dark green. Even we've done some paintings where a really dark burgundy is so beautiful when that comes through your top coats. But for tonight, we're just using this really pretty navy. Okay, so if there's no questions, Dylan, I am going to hit it with a hairdryer and just get it dry. Because as we layer color on top, we just want to make sure that our base coat is completely dry. All right, I think it's perfectly dry. Might be a few areas on the edge. I'm gonna hit that just so when I'm moving it around. Okay perfectly dry. You guys can see one coat is such beautiful coverage. There's a few areas that's not covered up perfect. Do not worry about that and do not worry about adding a second coat as long as it's a good solid area in most of the areas of the canvas. All right, guys, so what we are going to do next is apply our pattern. And this is always a spot where we get lots of questions if we have a pattern. We kind of like to not always give a pattern. And the reason is we want to teach you techniques and ways to make it more about painting, brush strokes, um, loading your brush, dry brushing, then coloring in following an exact pattern like a coloring book. So I always like to, to describe a pattern when you're looking at your artwork, break it down into basic shapes. The bottom is just a basic line dividing your canvas. Your, <coughs> excuse me, your leaves are just circles. A circle in the middle and circles around the edge. Your leaves are very basic. Your vase is an oval with a flat bottom. Once you kind of break it down into basic shapes, it makes applying a pattern really that much, that much easier. So using this as a reference, what I'm going to do first is I am going to create the line where my floral vase will sit. 
and I'm just going to go, I'm not going to divide my canvas in half. I'm going to divide it in half with my finger, but then I'm going to go a little more than halfway down, just kind of as a reference, and lightly with a chalk stick. The reason we recommend a chalk stick is one, you can wipe it off if you have a mistake and start right over, but you don't have to erase if you don't cover it up. A pencil or a pen, if you don't cover it up, you have to erase it, and that's just a step you don't want to do. So there is the ground or the table that my vase is going to sit on, and then I know my vase is over here on the side, and I'm just going to kind of sketch a little oval. I'm going to come below the line or the table and flatten off the bottom of that little vase. I'm not too worried about the top. If you want to, if it's easier for you, take a dry paper towel. If it makes the composition make more sense, you can erase the area where the line went through your vase. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize my flowers. And with the flowers, we also love to say, I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got six yellow flowers. If you want less, if you want just a few wildflowers coming out of your vase, make this your own. Just learn the techniques and the steps. But it does not have to be exactly the same. So now I'm going to start right here by my vase and I'm going to draw one little center. I'm just drawing that center circle. And again, it's not perfect. I'm just representing the placement of all of the design elements. And I'm drawing the little petals around that. Doing the same thing with this second little flower. Then I'm going to leave this space right here, which is these little orange wildflowers. I'm going to leave that open maybe three fingers. I love to measure with two fingers, three fingers, even with my whole hand. So about three fingers, I'm going to go up and add another little yellow flower. I'm going to come down below it. But you guys definitely just draw or chalk in as many flowers as, as is perfect for your composition. I'm going to do a few more yellow ones and maybe one more small one right there. So now I've got the main design elements or my largest flowers. I'm going to do some of my larger leaves and I'm just going to sketch a basic, a basic shape. Knowing that I'm not going to color it in exactly, but I just want that placement. I love that the whole canvas is kind of working with the circular shape of the canvas. I think that will be a really nice composition when it comes together at the end. One thing Jess is so good at is taking her design elements off the edge of the canvas. It just really makes for such a beautiful layout where that leaf came off the edge, where this little element comes off the canvas. I love the way she does that because it just really steps up your painting to a whole new level. So I've got my main leaves. I've got these little accent leaves. Oh, I just complimented Jess on dropping things off the edge of the canvas. I better get those on there. And then she's got these cute little orange, almost like bushels of wildflowers. I'm going to draw those, again, just so that I've got placement. And I'm just going to really lightly with the chalk sketch those on there. And then I've got another little little bundle of wildflowers up here. And then she's got these beautiful green berries. I'm just going to do them as the same pattern, just more circles, a little bit larger, and really just filling in some of the areas to complete the bouquet of flowers. I'm going to do a few down here where she's got them kind of falling out of the vase a little bit. And then maybe one or two up here. Okay, so you've got a really basic pattern. You see where your yellow flowers will go. You see where your leaves will go. You see where your wild flowers will go. And that gives you the confidence to do all of the fun techniques. All right, so now we are going, I'm going to scoot that up so you guys can still see it. And this right here is my palette paper. 
and I'm going to apply some wicker white. some of the daffodil yellow a little bit of the pure orange I never put too much paint on my palette because you can always add more to your palette you just don't want to waste it and have a bunch of paint on there that you're not going to use a little bit of the apple red because we're going to start with almost like a base coat. So our canvas is base coated, but now we're going to do a base coat on every one of our flowers. So with this technique, I guess it's kind of called a dry brush technique because we're never using any water on our painting. We'll use water, of course, to clean our brushes in between colors, but everything that we do on the canvas, you want to dry off your brush as good as possible on a paper towel. All right, so all I'm going to do first is load the wicker white and I am using a number 10 flat brush you don't want too much paint because you want that dark base coat to come through in a lot of different areas but the first thing I'm gonna do is base coat the petals that are yellow on my large oh let me scoot that down on my large flowers and to do a base coat in a circle all I'm doing is two C strokes one that kind of covers the top of the circle and then repeating that stroke on the bottom. It gives you just a really nice circle to represent your petals. So a C stroke on the top and a C stroke on the bottom. But you guys can see I'm not using too much paint so some of that navy is definitely coming through. That's the beauty of painting on a dark color. Is that really pretty base coat. Gives a lot of dimension to your painting. And I'm not using any water. Now you guys can see, I'm not following that chalk pattern perfectly like it's a, like it's a coloring book or a paint by number. I'm just allowing it to be my guide. The chalk that we applied for our pattern almost absorbs right into the wet paint and just completely eliminates that pattern, which is really nice because if you had applied your pattern with a pencil or with a pen, sometimes you've got to work a little harder to cover up that pattern. If you guys are more comfortable, I'm not switching brushes at all, but if you're more comfortable switching to a smaller flat brush, I just switched to a number six, you can do still the C strokes that give you the circle, but then you could just fill in the centers. I always tell people, work with whatever brush you're most comfortable with because then you'll be the most confident in, in learning the techniques. But you've just got a really, a really loose, kind of a random, you don't want your edges to be perfect circles. You just want them to be a really basic first base coat to your little yellow flowers. Let me move that in. So just a nice base coat to the little yellow. All right, all I'm gonna do actually, I'm not even gonna clean these brushes in water. I'm just gonna rub them on my paper towel. And now what I'm gonna do is mix two parts of the yellow with equal parts of the wicker white. And if you want a really soft pastel yellow you could add a little bit more of the white. If you like that vivid daffodil yellow right out of the bottle, don't mix it at all. But just softer, a little bit more of a, of a pastel. I'm gonna remove some of that paint off my brush, only on a paper towel, and then I'm gonna paint right over my white base coat 
same stroke, a C stroke on the top and a C stroke on the bottom. But here's where, I hope you guys can see it. Sometimes it's hard to see on the camera, but can you guys see that the navy is still coming through the white and the yellow? The yellow is not completely covering exactly the white, so you get all of that dimension, that layered color, which is a really, really fun, easy way to add dimension to this style of painting. We're not following a pattern, we're just following the chalk as a guide and then we're using our first step or our white base coat also as a guide. Not too much paint because you don't want a solid base coat. You want the white to complement the yellow and the dark navy to complement everything. I love when there's a perfect example of where it happened. I love when you're using this dry brush technique and a little bit of your stroke, can you see it right there? A little bit of your stroke doesn't have any paint left on your brush, so you actually get that really pretty texture of the canvas. And that just adds to the look of, of your flower petals. All right, so we did the yellow. All we're really doing, you guys, is base coating with a dry brush. So I'm gonna clean that brush in the water now. I'm still using my number 10, but I'm gonna get as much of the water out as I can. And then I'm gonna base coat these little orange centers of the yellow and little wild flowers. So to do that, I want my first coat to be a little bit lighter orange. So actually I'm gonna pick up a scoop of wicker white and I'm gonna mix that into the edge of the pure orange. I just want more of a, more of a peach. Mix that up and then just like we did, remove a lot of that extra paint. Still using the number 10 flat brush. First, I'm gonna base coat the center, staying on the chisel and still doing a C stroke, right in the middle of each one of my yellow flowers. But I want you guys to see, I'm not eliminating that navy. Where the navy is separating the center from each little flower petal, you don't wanna fill that in. You don't want to completely eliminate the navy. You just want to do a circle in the center and keep some of that dark outline. And let the paint overlap. Like you can see right there, my petals were closer. So overlap that peach right over the yellow. You'll get a really beautiful look. All my little wildflowers, I'm also going to base coat. Very little paint and no water. And even though you've applied that pattern with the chalk, if you see an area that maybe you want to add an extra flower or eliminate an extra flower, don't worry about it. The chalk is so easy to remove at the very end. Just because you applied that part of your of your pattern does not mean that you've got to paint over it if you catch it when you're, when you're in the middle of painting. So all I've done is applied a base coat, a really soft peach color. And what I'm actually going to do now, because I love this color, is I am going to base coat just a little bit of my vase. 
I'm going to hold this up and see if you guys can see. There's a little bit of navy coming through, definitely as the outline. There's a little bit of soft peach you can see coming through there. All of that dimension on the vase is actually the, the underneath color coming through the final, which is that red-orange color. So to get that, using that same peach that we mixed, I'm just going to base coat maybe down the left side of my vase, but letting that navy come through for sure, maybe on that edge of that leaf, no water and very little, very little paint. But you're just applying your first color to create all the dimension in that vase. And there's no right or wrong to this. You're just getting that color on there somewhere and not solid so that the navy still shows through. All right, so once I've done that, what I'm gonna do now I'm going to clean that brush, remove all the moisture, and then I'm going to scoop up some of that pumpkin orange, I'm sorry, pure orange, a little bit of that red, and I'm going to mix a dark orange, a little bit of a rust orange. It's probably two parts orange to one part red. I'm going to add a little bit more orange. I definitely want it to be more like a, like a rust, an autumn orange, than a red. But that red just darkens it up just enough. Once it's mixed, get extra paint off on a paper towel. And then we're going to do the same thing we did with our yellow flowers still using that number 10 flat brush and I am just gonna do the same C strokes over my base coated peach centers but I'm gonna make sure that some of that peach still shows it's almost like we're adding highlights and shadows in the opposite order than you normally would. You normally base coat all of your highlights and then you go in and add shadows. We're almost doing that in reverse order. The dark we did first, so all of our shadows are coming through as we apply our lighter values. Using that same orange, I'm going to go over our little group of wildflowers still using a C stroke and a dry brush. So you've got all of that dimension. All right, I'm gonna clean that brush. And we're going to do the same technique to create a base coat on our leaves. So this is classic green. If you ran out of wicker white, you're going to need a little bit more of that on your palette. So I'm going to mix probably two parts of the classic green with one part of the wicker white. I just want to get a softer, lighter green. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get just the corner of my brush into that yellow just to create a little bit more of an apple green or a lime green. But whenever we're mixing colors, you guys mix the color that you love. If your house is more of a sage green, maybe you would eliminate the yellow and just mix the green and the white. Mix the perfect green that matches your home decor or whatever you're doing with this painting. All right, so I removed extra paint on my paper towel. And the only reason I remove paint is I don't want my base coat to be so thick that it covers up my navy. 
See when you have a lighter base coat, some of that navy shows through. So I am base coating just using my chisel edge and a really basic technique. I'm just outlining and then loosely base coating each of my leaves. And don't worry about where your leaf leaves meets your flower. Leave a little bit of navy because that's what's going to give us that outline and that dimension at the very end of our project. I'm going right over the chalk. Some of the leaves are a little bigger, some of them are a little smaller. I'm just using that chalk as a guide, not as an exact pattern. The key is not a lot of not a lot of paint, no water, and letting the navy come through. So I've got a good base coat. I'm going to make that one a little bit longer. Actually, going to make this one a little bit longer too. And look, I'm going right over that peach. Whoops, that's all right. I'm going to mix a little bit more, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white and mostly green, rolling my brush in the paint to make sure it's mixed very well. And then I'm going to base coat these, these little berries. Same number 10. You can see I didn't have a pattern for one there, but I knew I wanted one more. So I just added it, even though I didn't have a pattern. If you see a hole or an area where you want another little wildflower, just go in there and add it with your brush. You don't need to create a pattern with your chalk. You guys, I even kind of like that with so much navy showing through. It's just such a really pretty color combination. All right, so everything is base coated. Your flowers, your centers, your leaves. I'm going to clean that brush off. And I'm actually going to get the tiniest bit of navy blue on my palette. And whenever you're, you're mixing colors with a dark color, you want to use the littlest amount first because a dark color will change your color so quickly. Can you guys see? All I did was tip the, dip the very corner of that brush. I'm not sure if you can see it. Oh, there, over the peach. Into that navy blue. And I'm actually going to mix that into the green, the classic green, just to darken that green. You always want to add the smallest amount first because you can always add more, but if it gets too dark, you've got to start over. So that's the classic green and just the tiniest bit of navy. The tiniest little bit just to darken that up just a little. And if you like the classic green out of the bottle, the way it is, definitely use it and don't mix the navy. But I wanted a little richer dark green. So now, we are not going to base coat our entire leaf with a second color. What I want you guys to see is we've left some of it the light green, maybe divided it in half or divided it and just kind of shadowed the top so that you get all of those layers. So maybe on this leaf, for example, I'm only going to base coat the left side. Maybe on this leaf, I'll do a long stroke and then a little bit in the center. You don't want to do a full base coat. You just want to accent over the lighter green. Like on this one, for example, maybe I'll just do the dark green on the top of the leaf 
and then let that little point stay the light green. Make each one different. You can divide it down the middle. But by doing that without base coating it completely, you just get some really nice details. It's a fun way to do an abstract layered, layered look. All right, I'm not going to clean that brush in water. I'm going to go into the wicker white and with the paint that's on the brush, I'm going to just let what was in the brush and some wicker white create a really beautiful soft sage green. And I am going to go over my little green berries, still with a dry brush so that green shows through, doing a C stroke. But just separating those from the green palette that we did our leaves in. So see how those little berries now have a little bit of the dark or the leaf color green coming through, a little bit of the navy, but then their, their own little color with this soft sage green. I love the Folk Art Acrylics because you can mix so many different ways and get so many different colors with just a few basic paints. So everything is coming together. Everything is starting to feel base coated. So using that same brush, I guess we might only need one brush today. I'm only using the 10. I'm going to add a little bit of navy. If you still have that dark green on your palette, that's what you're using. I didn't mix enough, so I'm going to mix a little bit more. And that's the classic green with a little bit of navy. And all I'm going to do is highlight with half of a C stroke my little berries. And by layering all these colors, all we're doing is creating dimension. If any of them got too dark, you can go right back into that sage. You notice with the folk art, it never muddies up. The Let's Paint Kit is such a great combo of paints that work beautifully together. So you can just layer and blend until you get that perfect color. All right, so now I'm going to clean that brush. And what we're going to actually do now is base coat our vase, or top coat our, our vase, clean my brush, dry it out, and if you've got some of that dark orange that we did for our flower centers, add a little bit more red. Need a little bit more of the orange. And I'm actually going to put the tiniest, tiny, tiny, the tiniest amount of that dark green. You can see barely any. I'm even taking some off my brush. And I'm going to add that into my red, rusty orange. The tiniest bit of green. I just want to darken that and make it a little bit more of a rusty orange and that green will do that. But remember, you can't, you can't fix it if it gets too dark. You'd have to start over. That's why you add the smallest amount. I'm barely touching on that brush to add the green. And that's creating almost a dark terracotta orange color. All right, getting the extra paint off. This is going to be the color that I'm going to do my vase. 
So I'm going to base coat over my peach, but same technique. You don't want to cover it up completely, so you want to use very little amount of paint on your brush so that when your brush drags over the peach and the navy, you get all of that dimension. You want to butt right up to the other elements that you've painted. So I'm going really close to the leaves, but you don't have to outline it exactly. Same with these berries. I'm allowing some of the color to show through the navy, but I'm getting a good solid representation of this color on my vase. A really loose random stroke. I think someone once called it a slip slap, which I absolutely loved. And the reason is you don't want to outline and create a solid base coat or a stripe or a pattern. So if you almost just slap your brush in a random pattern, your paint will apply in a very abstract way. So you'll get navy coming through in some areas. That soft peach you can see is outlining that leaf. So you just really get some great dimension. I'm going to go in there and pick up just a little bit of that red. Same dirty brush. I didn't clean it in the water. I think it's hard for you guys to see on the camera. Let's see if I hold it up. Yeah, I'm just putting a little bit of red on that left side just to give some, some spunk to that vase. I'm going to add just a little bit more red. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are going to create our background color. And we're doing our background last. So we are going to do this light pink. I'm not sure if you guys, I think you guys can tell. Yep, see how our, our background is a really, really, really light pink, almost white so that these tone on tone stripes are very, very subtle. So to mix that, make sure you've got a clean dollop of wicker white on your palette, and then just the tiniest little bit of baby pink. I'm gonna add the pink to the white. It's really gonna almost look like white with the smallest amount of baby pink. You're going to mix that up. Yeah, that's perfect. Mostly white with a little bit of baby pink. Now I'm using my 12 inch flat brush, my number 12 flat brush, and I'm going to start over here on the bigger edge of my canvas. And I'm just loading that brush, still doing a dry brush technique. And with this, the, the only key is you don't want to create a pattern and do stripes. You don't want to outline your pro or your pattern exactly. You want to be very random. So I'm just going to do, I think that slip slap is the best way to describe it. I'm going to do the edge first. I'm going to do a line where the table divides the background, but see if you jump around your canvas, how you don't get a pattern, and where the paint comes off, you get different levels of pink. If you did stripes or dash marks, it would almost look like subway tile, or it would just be too, it would be too perfect, and you want a really abstract soft background. But you want to make sure that that navy is coming through. Now what I love about this is we want to keep a blue, a navy blue border around all of our design elements. So to do that using your chisel edge, I just want you to outline, but don't do it too perfect, all of the outside edges of all of your elements. So your leaves, your berries, 
and then go back in there right away and soften that outline by adding more of that paint. I want to go in and just leave the navy and where your elements are kind of close together like all of these little wildflowers you could set that larger brush to the side and sneak over there and get a smaller brush this is a number six and do that same outline technique still no water and it doesn't have to be the same amount of navy the same thickness of navy you just want to have the elements outlined just enough so that dark color kind of defines each shape. So I'm using a smaller brush where I'm more comfortable. And if there's some areas, like for example there, I'm not going to paint this pink in there at all because the green is so close. Only do it in the open areas where you're wanting to fill in that background. I'm switching back and forth between a larger flat brush and this tiny one. Because once you've done your outline, you definitely want to go in there and soften the edge of the outline. Because you don't want it to look like you outlined everything. An outline up here, leaving just enough of that blue to make everything pop off. I love this light pink. See how my outline is different on every section? That's what gives you that really unique look. But you still have so much of that beautiful blue. Just make sure whatever area you're outlining, so look, right there, this will be perfect where I show you. I'm outlining that leaf and that side of the vase. But really quickly, I'm softening that edge so that you don't see an exact outline. I'm running out of my light pink, so I'm getting some more white and mixing more of that color. And with a painting style like this, if it's a little lighter or a little darker, that's absolutely okay. I'm going to use the larger brush up here. It's kind of a big area. Without cleaning that brush, I'm going to just switch back and forth between the number, number six flat and the number 12 flat. But that's a perfect way where you can see. The outline is very irregular and not perfect. And that is the look that you're, that you're trying to achieve. If you were to go in and outline these flowers in a dark color, the look would be so different. It wouldn't look, it wouldn't look this wonderful. That's why doing the base coat or the dark color first is such a fun way, such a fun way to paint. So I'm just making sure that my pink is as dark as I want it. You want that navy to come through, but you also want it pink enough to separate it from the little white stripes that we're going to do. Okay, so you've got the beautiful background. Now I'm going to clean that brush. I'm still using that number 12. And now Dutch Aqua. You're going to put that on your palette. 
If you don't have a little bit of navy, you want to add that to your palette. And always some wicker white. And we're going to mix the color for our tabletop. If you want to use just the duck, Dutch Aqua, that's perfect. I'm going to add a little bit of wicker white just to soften it up a little. But the Dutch Aqua right out of the bottle is so beautiful. Remove extra on the paper towel. And then I'm just going to do that same technique. I'm going to outline my vase, but making sure that some of that navy shows. Same with where the table meets the background. And then I'm going to soften that edge. Now don't forget guys, what you do to the top, you should do to the side. So maybe tonight or tomorrow, after everything is dry, you would just extend that line that represents the table the vase is sitting on, and you would do the same thing to the edge of your canvas. So you would do pink on top, blue on the bottom. It just gives it a really nice finished, finished look. If you like a lot of the navy showing through, You'll add less of the Dutch Aqua. But you get all that really pretty shading. All right. I'm going to dry that brush, not in, not in water and clean it, but just on my paper towel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix some navy and some Dutch Aqua to get a really pretty dark blue that we will then go in. I'm going to add a touch of white. I'm just trying to get a really pretty, almost an aqua meets denim color. A little bit of white. And you guys, this is a step that you could skip completely. This could be considered done. But I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. So I don't want you guys to overthink this. I want you to envision the light is coming in from this side. So if the light's coming in from this side, the shadow is being created down here. It does not need to mimic exactly. You don't have to draw a pattern. But with a dry brush, you just want to imitate where this naturally would be a shadow. Maybe have some rounded edges because your flowers all have rounded petals. But nothing perfect, nothing exact, just an area on your canvas where this vase would create a shadow. All right, so once we've done that, all we're going to do is two little details to tie it all together. I'm using that same, let's see, number six flat brush. Patterns are so popular right now, whether it be wallpaper or fabric. So all we're doing is adding a little punch of pattern. And a pattern can be as simple as a stripe. So over the pink, using the end of the flat brush and wicker white, I'm just going to do a really loose stripe. And because this painting is so loose and abstract, you're not going to apply a pattern for your stripes because you don't want your stripes to be perfect when you've got all these beautiful abstract flowers and leaves on your painting. So you can see the stripes are spaced out close enough to, to exact, but you want that irregular so it looks really organic. And it's super subtle. The pink and the white adds texture without busying, busying up your canvas. I'm not going to do the stripes in between because I don't think it needs it. Just on the background. Just to add some dimension. Okay, you've got that beautiful pattern. And then 
something that's super fun to do at the end of any technique like this is to dry brush. And to dry brush, all we're going to do is make sure everything is pretty dry. I think all of my flowers and my leaves are pretty much dry. So I'm using my number 12 flat brush. I'm going to go into that wicker white. Actually, I'm going to get a little bit more wicker white. The tiniest amount. And here you're going to use almost no paint. So on a paper towel, even less than what we used for the rest of our canvas. You're loading wicker white onto your brush and then you're removing almost all of it on a dry paper towel. And then all you're doing is almost dusting or polishing. You can go over your entire canvas. You can go over just some elements, whether it be the vase, the ground. But you're creating that final highlight with very little paint. Always removing it on a paper towel. But what this does, that's what I love right there. It did it perfectly. See where with such little paint, you get the texture of the canvas and all of the colors that you've already layered on. So the dry brush just kind of pulls everything together and adds just a little bit more dimension to all your design elements. All right, I think that's all we've got, Dylan. Okay, everybody, so this was our Let's Paint Live. In an hour, we taught you this beautiful bouquet on a round canvas. So join us next month. It's the first Thursday of every month, and we'll do another fun painting in just about an hour. Thanks for joining us. Bye.